Hey everyone, me and Squeaks were just out watering the garden. And I was telling him about one of the coolest parts of summer. All the insects. Hundreds of ants crawling in a line, bees buzzing around flowers, grasshoppers jumping around. There are so many different kinds. You're right, Squeaks. They do look really different, but insects all have some important things in common, no matter how different they are. Ladybugs, houseflies, honeybees, we're big fans of insects, and you should be too. For one thing, they're everywhere. There are by far more insects in the world than any other kind of animal. And there are lots of different species of insects too, of all different colors, shapes, even sizes. Let me introduce you to one of my friends. This is Holmes, a northern walking stick insect. You can probably guess why she's called a walking stick. Northern walking stick insects are from the forests of northeastern North America, where it's easy for them to blend in with the sticks, twigs, and leaves of the woods. If you ever saw Holmes out in the wild, she'd be pretty hard to find. Now, Holmes here is bigger than most insects you probably know about, but she isn't the biggest, not even close. Probably the longest insect in the world is a distant relative of Holmes called Chan's Mega Stick. This is a huge type of walking stick insect that lives in the forests of Borneo. It can grow as long as 36 centimeters. That's as big as a rat. But other insects can get even bigger. The heaviest, most massive insect that's ever been found is the giant weta from New Zealand. It looks like an enormous cricket, and it can weigh more than 70 grams. That's about as big as a small bird. Now, even though they look totally different, the mega stick and the giant weta are the same kind of animal, and so are tiny ants, flying dragonflies, and buzzing bees. They're all insects. Oh, good question, Squeaks. How can you tell an insect when you see one? Well, all insects have three big things in common, and they're pretty easy to spot. First, insects don't have any bones. Lots of animals like your dog, your cat, a bird, or you have a skeleton made of bones. This lets us stand up straight and move around, but insects have their skeletons on the outside. Instead of bones, they have a hard shell around their body called an exoskeleton. Another thing insects have in common is that their bodies all have three main parts. Up in front, there's the head. It's where the eyes and the mouth are, and usually there's a pair of long, spindly feelers on top of it that the insect uses to sense its surroundings. These are called antennae. Below the head is the middle section called the thorax. This is where you find the legs and sometimes wings, but not all insects have wings. And bringing up the rear is the abdomen. This is the part where the insect digests food. And if it has a stinger, you'll find it here at the very end. Finally, the third way to make sure the animal you're looking at is an insect is probably Probably the easiest of them all. Just count its legs. That's because all insects have six legs and only six. Whether it's an ant or a beetle or a giant weta or a walking stick insect. So here we have Holmes. Let's count her legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. But what about this centipede? Is it an insect? How about this spider? No, again, spiders have eight legs and insects only have six. So now you know the three easy steps for spotting an insect. One, it has an exoskeleton. Two, its body is divided into a head, thorax, and abdomen. And three, it has six legs. So the next time you see a fly or a bee or an ant, stop and take a closer look and see if you can find what makes an insect an insect. Ah. That's a really good question, Squeaks. It is really amazing how insects can walk up walls and crawl on the ceiling, but how do they do it? <laughs> no, not superpowers, Squeaks, but they do have pretty special feet. Check this out. One of the best parts of our day here at the fort is checking our email. We get so many awesome science questions. Even though we can't answer them all, today Squeaks and I wanted to answer a few. Okay. Our first question comes from Kelsey. Kelsey wants to know, why is it harder to run uphill and easier to run downhill? Interesting question, Kelsey. It's easier to run down a hill than up a hill because of gravity, which is a force that pulls you and everything else on the planet toward the ground. Forces are the pushes and pulls that happen to us and all around us every day. When you push a block along the floor or roll a ball, you're putting a force on it. Gravity is a force too, and it's pulling on us all the time, even though we can't see it. But we sure can feel what gravity does. Like when I jump in the air, like that. 
I don't stay up for very long because gravity pulls me right back down to the ground. The reason I was able to be in the air for even a little bit is because of another force, the push I made against the floor with my legs. I pushed down with my legs hard enough to overcome gravity, but only for a second. Now, if I push down harder, I can jump even higher, but it takes more work. The same kind of thing happens when we run up a hill. Our legs are trying to push our bodies up while gravity is pulling us down. We have to work harder to fight the pull of gravity, and more work means we get tired faster. The opposite happens when we run down the hill. This time we get a little help from gravity since gravity is pulling us down, the same direction that we want to go. We're not fighting against gravity, so it doesn't feel like we're working as hard. Thanks for your question. Kelsey. Our next question is from Maddie. Maddie asks us, how can insects climb walls and be upside down? That's an awesome question. If I tried to climb a wall, gravity would pull me right back down. So how do flies and other insects do it? Gravity pulls on everything, even the tiniest fly. Well, some insects have special body parts that help them to climb up walls and across ceilings. Because a wall or ceiling that looks or even feels pretty smooth to us really isn't. If we could look at a wall really closely, we'd see that they have lots of little bumps, cracks, and pits. And what seems like a tiny bump to us can look like a comfortable place to stand for a tiny fly. Some insects have little claws or hairs on the ends of their legs, which they use to help them grab onto the bumps in the wall or ceiling. There are also some insects that make an oily liquid that helps them to stick to a wall or ceiling. It's sticky enough to keep their bodies from falling down, but not so sticky that they get stuck in one place. Yeah, you're right, Squeaks. Bugs are really cool, but there are some that are pretty annoying, huh? Like mosquitoes. If you've been bitten by a mosquito, you know how itchy their bites can be. Hmm. I wonder why they're so itchy. Oh, Squeaks says we have a video that can answer my question. Let's watch. Hi guys, I just got back from a really fun hike in the woods. I saw a lot of cool things like fall flowers and lots of birds and pretty rocks, but I only brought one thing back with me. Lots of mosquito bites. Depending on where you live and what time of year it is, if you spend time outside, you've probably been bitten by mosquitoes too. Long after the mosquito is gone, you're left with red, itchy bumps, and I mean itchy. So what's going on? Why are mosquito bites so itchy? To answer that question, we need to take a closer look at where these bumps come from. First, let's learn a little bit about the mosquito. For one thing, only female mosquitoes bite. And for another thing, what we call a bite isn't really a bite at all. It's more like a jab from a thing called a proboscis. Proboscis. Proboscis is such a fun word to say. A proboscis is a special mouth part that some insects have. It looks kind of like a long tube or a straw. If you've ever had the chance to get a close look at a butterfly, Maybe you've seen their long curly proboscis, which they use as a long tube to sip nectar from flowers. But the female mosquito, she uses her proboscis to take a tiny sip of blood from the blood vessels right beneath your skin. Her body makes special chemicals to help her do the job. Some of them make your blood easier for her to drink. Others even help you from feeling the little pinch when her proboscis pokes you. After she's had her sip and she buzzes off, she leaves a little bit of those chemicals behind in your skin and they set off signals in your body's immune system. Your immune system's job is to protect your body from invaders. Not ones from outer space, but invaders like bacteria and viruses, any particles that can make you sick. Kind of like soldiers protecting a fort, your immune system attacks just about anything that it doesn't recognize and that includes the chemicals left behind by the mosquito. Once your body discovers it's been bitten by a mosquito, it sends some extra blood and other fluids to the bite. This does a nice job of protecting the area so it can heal and helps your body get rid of the chemicals that the mosquito left behind. But it also makes the area around the bite swell up, causing a bump. And that swelling sets off nerves in your skin around the bump. Nerves carry messages between parts of your body. So when you feel the tingly itch of a mosquito bite, that's the work of your nerves telling your brain. In case you haven't noticed, there's something going on down here. And even though it's really hard, you shouldn't scratch those bumps. It's not good for your skin and it actually makes everything worse. Scratching irritates your skin even more. And when that happens, your body's immune system tries even harder to stop whatever's bothering it. So that makes the bump even itchier. Experts say that using ice or a paste made from baking soda and water on a mosquito bite can actually help with the swelling and the itch. So remember, 
Stop scratching, whatever it takes. One thing most insects have in common is that they're pretty small. But did you know that there are some insects that are as long as your hand? Would you want to hold a bug that big squeaks? <laughs> and there are bugs bigger than that too. Let's take a look at some of the biggest bugs in the world. What kind of animal has six legs, three body parts, and is found pretty much everywhere on Earth? You're right, Squeaks! Insects! One of the coolest things about insects is that there are so many different kinds. Think about some of the insects you already know, like butterflies, bees, and ants. They look really different from each other. They're all different shapes, colors, and sizes. Squeaks and I like to go outside and learn more about the insects we find by watching how they move around and what they eat. Sometimes we find some pretty big ones, but they're not even close to the biggest insects in the world, like this one. This is a titan beetle. The name titan actually means big or gigantic, which makes sense because they're huge. These beetles can get to be over 16 centimeters long, longer than a dollar bill. Just like other beetles you might know, like ladybugs, bugs and fireflies, titan beetles have four wings. A beetle's front wings are hard and act as a kind of protective case for the back wings. But it's the other ways that titan beetles protect themselves that make them look so fierce. They have sharp spines on their body and their jaws are super strong. A titan beetle can bite down hard enough with its jaws to snap a pencil in half. There's no reason to be scared of them though, Squeaks. Even though they're super strong, scientists who study titan beetles have found out that they aren't aggressive. That means they don't attack people or any other animal, unless they're scared. But there's a lot we still don't know about them. Scientists aren't sure what adult titan beetles eat, if they eat anything at all. Titan beetles live in the warm, wet rainforest, and scientists think baby titan beetles live underground and eat old and rotting wood. So not only is the titan beetle big, it's also a a pretty big mystery. Another huge insect is the giant weta. The name that scientists use for the giant weta means monster-like grasshopper, and it definitely lives up to its name. Giant wettas live in only one place in the world, in the island country of New Zealand. It has some relatives that might be around where you live, though. It's related to the little crickets you can hear chirping outside in the evenings. The giant weta grows to be about 10 centimeters long, which is very long, but still shorter than the titan beetle. But the giant weta is a champion if we measure it in another way. That's because the giant weta is one of the heaviest insects in the world. Some giant wettas can weigh about 70 grams, as much as about 25 pennies. Giant wettas are heavier than most mice and even some small birds. They're too heavy to fly and most giant wettas don't even jump. So we've met a long insect and a heavy insect. Next, let's meet a wide insect, the atlas moth. It's pretty easy to see why this insect is so big. Yes, Squeaks! It's wings. Atlas moths have some of the biggest wings of any insect on Earth. They can get to be over 30 centimeters wide. That's about the size of a ruler. Like other moths and butterflies, atlas moths start out as a caterpillar. And these caterpillars are very hungry. They eat a lot of leaves and they grow to be very fat. Then they spin a silk cocoon around themselves and change into a moth while they're inside it. Once these moths come out of their cocoons though, they don't eat at all. They only live for about five to seven days, and that whole time they get all their energy from the leaves they ate as caterpillars. The name that people from China use for this moth means snake's head. And if you look at the tops of an atlas moth's wings, you can see a pattern that looks a lot like a snake's head. Scientists think that the pattern might scare away birds or other animals that might want to eat the moth, since the pattern looks like a snake that could eat them. Between the titan beetle, the giant weta, and the atlas moth, there are some pretty big insects out there. One of the nicest sounds of summer is crickets chirping in the evening. Don't you think, Squeaks? Yeah, that's true, Squeaks. Not all insects make sounds loud enough for us to hear, but some are way louder than crickets. In fact, there are some bugs that can make a sound as loud as a motorcycle engine. It's true. They're called cicadas, and they're the loudest insect in the world. Watch. How many different animal sounds can you make? I like to quack like a duck, quack, 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 quack. And I like to moo like a cow, moo. And Squeaks is really good at 
squeaking like a rat. Lots of animals make noises, and in the summer, I like to listen for one of my favorite animal sounds. Can you guess what animal it comes from? <laughs> The noise does sound loud, so I can see why you would think it comes from a big animal. But this animal tricked you, Squeaks. The animal that makes this noise is smaller than my hand. It's a cicada. Cicadas are a type of insect that live all over the world, and they're famous for the noises that they make when it's hot out. A lot of people only hear the cicadas, though, and never actually see them. They're not very big insects, and many cicadas use camouflage to blend in with the trees and plants. But you can recognize them by their big eyes and clear wings that lie across their back. Cicadas may be small compared to humans, or even squeaks, but they still make some of the loudest animal sounds in the world. And there's a very good reason why. Those cicadas we see in the trees, they're actually pretty old for insects, but they've spent almost all of their lives underground. It takes a baby cicada either 13 or 17 years to grow up. And while they're growing, they stay underground where it's safe from predators that might want to eat them. Then, when they're old enough and it gets warm outside, they finally crawl up out of the ground. Can you imagine seeing the world for the first time after years underground in the dark? The thing is, once they come up above the ground, cicadas don't live for very long, usually just a few weeks. They really want to find another cicada to have more cicada babies with but they have to do it quickly. So the male or boy cicadas make a really loud noise so the female or girl cicadas will know they're there. But cicadas make noises a bit differently than other animals. For example, if I wanted to make a loud noise, I could use my voice and shout. Although I won't since we're only using our inside voices in the fort. But cicadas can't make noises with their mouths like we do. Instead, they use a special body part called a timbre to make their sounds. Cicadas have two timbles, one on each side of their body. Each timbre is made of a very thin material called a membrane. Along the timbre, there are stripes of thicker membrane, creating what look like ribs down the cicada's side. When the cicada wants to make noise, they pull the ribs of their timbre close together very quickly, creating clicking sounds as each rib hits the one next to it. It's a lot like how you can make sounds with a bendy straw. If you move it back and forth really quickly, it makes a noise. Cicadas can pull apart the ribs on their timbles and then click them together again so quickly that each clicking sound runs into the next, creating one big loud sound. Can you hear each click in the cicada song squeaks? Neither can I. They're so fast that it becomes almost impossible to tell each click apart. Not to mention almost painfully loud. Some cicadas can be as loud as a motorcycle engine. One of the loudest cicadas in the world is the walker cicada, which lives in North America. Walker cicadas can be as loud as a honking car horn, and the sound can hurt your ears after a while. But if there's a female cicada around, she'll definitely hear it. Then she can fly over to find the cicada making that sound. So if you hear that loud buzzing sound in the trees this summer, now you'll know where it's coming from. It means there's a cicada nearby. Oh, you're gonna make a loud sound too? Okay. That is one loud squeak, squeaks. You'd make a great cicada. Aren't insects cool squeaks? They're all so unique. Wait, listen. It sounds like the crickets are starting to chirp. What do you say we go sit outside and listen to them and see what other types of insects we can see? Thanks for joining us today. If you wanna keep learning and having fun with me, Squeaks, and all of our friends, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time here at the fort.